Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today we are going to talk about the chaos of the back to school season. This season can be so incredibly demanding. So today I'm going to share a little bit of my own experience and advice for easing into the fall season with grace. These tips will help you balance high productivity with a sense of humanity. Let me know how your back to school experience is going. Pop onto the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn and drop me a comment. I respond to everything. Every change in season commands a change in energy, and the transition from summer to fall may be the most demanding. Though we always know it's coming, there is something jarring about watching the languid days of summer button themselves into the rigor and structure of fall. And this year's transition is more complex and consequential because, well, you know. Uh, yes, we are still in a pandemic. Working parents with still healing battle scars are once again wading through the uncertainty around back to school. Business forecasts and customer behavior remain hard to anticipate. To return or not to return to the office continues to haunt, and we can't seem to collectively kick burnout and loneliness. Whether or not you have kids, this season can punch you in the face if you let it. So let's all agree not to let it. Fall demands that we shift into high gear, but bumping up productivity shouldn't mean losing our sense of self-preservation. I've been running a workshop with leaders to help them implement strategies to support their teams in finding productive and self-loving ways of working. Today, let's talk about how you can apply the workshop's principles for your team or for yourself. It's grounded in the four P's, people, priorities, practices, and promises. Let's dive into each one. We'll start with people. People refers to you and anyone who relies on you to be whole and present. This may be a team you lead or your family, your students, your community of faith, your customers, etc. Summer, for many of us, provides a bit of healing space. We breathe easier, we take in more sunshine, we travel or we staycation. We have barbecues with friends. We refuel our emotional tanks and the fall seems to want to push us back to empty. So before the chaos of back-to-school season overtakes you, start by checking in with yourself and your people. Are you fundamentally okay? Do you have access to the essential tools and resources you need, be it childcare, sufficient Wi-Fi connection, someone to check on your parents, a quiet place to work? You can't deliver amazing results without having your basic needs met. Here are some of the ways I ready myself and my people for fall. I do extra kid time. I hang with my kids, making sure they have their schedules and supplies while addressing their anxieties about the new school year. I can't erase their anxiety, but I can show up and listen. I do friend checks. I check in with my nearest and dearest working parent friends so we can vent, cry, scream, or do whatever we need to ready ourselves for the barrage of fall. And I do a little life proofing. I get my resources lined up. My carpool buddies, my tutors, my trainer at the gym everything I need to keep my train on the tracks. There's no shame in needing help. What will you need to feel whole and armed and ready to jump in? Just prepare yourself. Next, we've got priorities. Ask yourself, what must you deliver in this season, the final quarter of 2021? And what are the critical few projects, actions, or areas of focus that will move you there most efficiently and impactfully? Be reflective and think holistically about work and beyond. On my end, I have some critical client projects that must be home runs. But also, in full disclosure, I have one daughter who's struggling with some things right now, and another who's made the freshman soccer team. I want to delight my clients, support my kid in pain, and cheer on my left striker. What matters is clear, and that clarity fuels my ability to say no to speaking gigs or marketing projects that are interesting, but aren't going to move my priorities forward. How can you find that gift of clarity for yourself? Get clear with your boss, your team, and your people around what must be delivered by year end. Work meetings, doctor's appointments, open spaces for learning and networking, these all matter. Your job is to ask and answer what makes the cut this quarter. Next, let's talk about practices. Now we've covered your who, people, and your what, priorities. So let's talk about your how. How will you hit these critical priorities, all of your priorities, out of the park? This isn't about best practices. It's about your practices, the ones that'll serve your needs. 
In looking back over the past 18 months, it feels like I've caught only fleeting glimpses of my best self. But when I pause to reflect on what that version of me was doing well, I can spot some trends. First, I was scheduling my self-care. My workouts, my walks, and even short, deep breathing sessions go on my calendar, because these are non-negotiable. I can wiggle on the when, but not the if. I'm consuming widely. I'm always reading fiction, nonfiction, listening to podcasts of all genres, and chatting with an array of people. All of these habits feed the creativity I need to deliver at my job. And I do daily celebrations. I keep a daily list in my bullet journal of each day's wins, because every victory deserves recognition, and celebrations make us want to do it again. Here are some from today's entry. I had a two-minute conversation with my daughter that didn't end in, okay, boomer. I got a note from a client telling me she'd just used one of the strategies we discussed, and it worked. I felt anxiety creeping on, so I took a two-minute breath break. And I had a light bulb moment that I'll test in a new program I'm designing. Now it's your turn. What are the things that you can do in a day that keep you feeling effective, aligned, and caring for yourself and your people? And finally, we come to promises. We begin with priorities and practices, but it takes promises, commitments to ourselves, to stay on track and evolve as we need to. Priorities change, new means of self-care emerge, and routines can get stale. And you need a way of observing and responding. So how will you continue to monitor what's working and what should be adjusted? Here are some of the strategies I use to keep myself honest and on track. First, the spouse test. My poor husband is the first to know if I'm off my game. He'll note my crankiness or antsiness, sorry honey, when I'm overworking or under break taking. And he knows to call me out gently but firmly. I have an accountability buddy. A beloved and trusted colleague and I touch base weekly, sometimes even just by email. We share our commitments with each other and report on successes and failures. I really hate reporting failures. So knowing that check-in is coming motivates me to do what I should. And finally, I watch for my tells. For many of us, heightened anxiety leads to excessive social media checking. We're seeking distraction from whatever is difficult in our lives. So when I'm falling down that social media rabbit hole, I know it's time to pause and reset. And now it's your turn. What promises will you make in service of keeping yourself productive and in balance? Doing a few critical things unforgettably well will beat doing everything at baseline every time. Wishing you a graceful season of back to school filled with ease. Follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And follow me on the Modern Mentor Podcast page on LinkedIn. If you have a question I can answer, shoot me an email at modernmentor at quickanddirtytips.com or leave me a voicemail at 201-632-5656. Be sure to let me know if it's okay to use your voice on the show. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our operations and editorial manager is Michelle Margulis. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller, and our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin.